Hey guys, Dow Phoenix here, and I'm heading to work. I still have to work, unlike some people, during this whole pandemic thing. But anybody that does have to, just take precautions, do what you gotta do to keep your distance from people, to keep sanitary, try not to touch surfaces unless you absolutely have to, and if you do, you know, of course, sanitize afterwards. Uh, definitely don't touch your face after doing so. But anyways, um, I wanted to talk about this whole, like, GameStop thing, because holy shit, man, a lot has developed in the past few days, and there is a good outcome, fortunately, to it, but I wanted to talk about some of the shit that's been going on with them. So, first of all, there's a whole memo, I'm sure you guys have seen the memo, where they instructed their employees to basically not close their stores, you know, basically say that they believe that they're an essential retailer and to give that information to police officers, which is hilarious because, I mean, let's be real, video games are not essential and even if they were, you could get them digitally, so that would kind of throw that argument out of the window. It's not like stuff like toilet paper and hand sanitizer and whatnot where you actually have to get a physical item of some kind, whether you go to the store or order online or get a delivery service to bring it to you or something like that. It's something you can just download. So that kind of shoots that argument out of the window right there because it was really essential. People have a way to get it from home and not have to physically go into your store. As a matter of fact, you guys run your own website. So you could just be like, you got to order it online, guys. Um, maybe call our customer service if you had a pre-order for something in store, and we'll see what we can do to uh, get that shipped out to you, you know, or something like that. That's what they should have done. But instead, they decided to be boneheaded and cocky about it and challenge the law. They fought the law, and the law won. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the hilarious thing, uh, Retro Bro, he sent me this thing that uh, his friend sent him or something like that from Reddit, where I guess somebody went to GameStop's store, and they saw a notice posted by the state of Pennsylvania that basically said that their business license in the state of Pennsylvania is revoked until further notice, which essentially means they can't have their store open at all there. And I'm sure that might happen elsewhere, too. But, you know, there's that going on, of course. Then there's a whole uh, Camelot 331 call. Uh, or I like to call Scamelot. Anyways, he had this call, and he actually provided some evidence for once. I will give credit to that. I kind of initially disputed it being a legitimate call, but... After seeing the backlash from GameStop over it and putting a privacy complaint, I started like, okay, maybe this is legit. Maybe this is a real thing. And he did expose him, you know, basically with certain things. Although he did add some commentary of his own, which kind of painted a narrative that I don't think necessarily was the case. But that's his MO. But it's kind of interesting, this whole thing, because... Yeah, I mean, I guess some people would say he did expose him. He did a good thing. But at the same time, he actually broke the law. He is actually a criminal now on his YouTube channel because he broke the law of recording without consent. You know, see, the state of Texas that he resides in is a one-party uh, consent state. So if you're a participant in a conversation, you can record it, you know, legally record it. But he wasn't actually a participant in the conversation. He only listened in. Uh, so that right there shows that he broke the law just to expose him. So he has to go through extreme means just to prove his point. So, you know, in any kind of case that he has against GameStop, they'll be able to use that against him. And they'll probably throw out anything in his favor because of that. So... That was a major fuck-up, but, you know, he clearly doesn't think about things, you know, he, he does what he does, and so now I wanted to touch on what's going on with GameStop right now, because GameStop has finally announced that they are no longer having their stores open to the public, 
Now, it's different from being closed because they're not technically closed. But if you want to purchase something at the store, you have to use the app or go to GameStop.com. And you have to, I guess, select whatever they have in store and purchase it all online. And then you'll basically get curbside delivery uh, for video games. So whatever games you buy, they'll deliver to you. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to work if, say, you physically pre-ordered a game in store. Like, say, Resident Evil 3 that's going to come out in a couple weeks. Or something of that nature. You know, like, if the stores are still closed at that point, are you still going to be able to get your game if you didn't purchase it online? That's a tough question. Um, anybody that that might affect, you know, Re you know, Fantasy 7, of course, coming out. Uh, fortunately, I haven't pre-ordered either of those games yet, so... You know, I have other options to get that stuff now. But, um, anybody that has, you probably need to first, I would try to call your store that you have it at and see what they say, see, see if there's anything they can do on their end, um, to allow you to pick that game up. Might be a little tricky if you haven't fully paid it off. So, I guess maybe you can contact customer service and pay the remaining balance on it or something like that and that way they don't have to worry about any kind of financial transaction they can just you know hand you your game or something like that or maybe you can contact them see if there's a way you can cancel the pre-order get it refunded to a trade card or something like that and that way you can order it online or um, if they can even refund your credit or debit card um, so they can get it elsewhere if need be, or just, you know, hang on to the money because, you know, times are tough and, you know, some people are out of work and maybe they need that extra cash, you know, they definitely need to step it up with that, but it seems like after <laughs> much screw-ups and gaffes and being exposed, they're finally trying to do the right thing, uh, of course, scam a lot's not going to recognize that because it doesn't fit his agenda, but, uh, or, you know, anybody that's just a total GameStop hater. You know, there's still people that are criticizing it because, like, oh, the employees, they shouldn't have to risk themselves. They're not really risking themselves if they're doing the curbside delivery. Uh, they could probably just put the game on top of somebody's car or something like that, you know. Not even, like, talk to them. Uh, that would be very minimal risk. And, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of these people, they probably rather have income than to be broke and have to possibly see what their fate is as far as unemployment insurance or government subsidies or whatever. You know, it's a very uncertain time. I know the government's talking about trying to, you know, get people cash payouts and things like that to help them in these times, but there's a lot of infighting with that. I don't want to make this a political debate, though, so. But, you know, some people actually need these jobs, and right now, as you might have noticed, a lot of people aren't hiring unless they happen to be like, say, a, a major retailer like Walmart or Amazon. I guess they're hiring right now. Um, but for the most part, a lot of companies aren't. So you got to be considerate of people's needs. And, I mean, people can voluntarily not show up, you know, at the same time. Nobody's being forced to show up to work at GameStop. You know, it's not like good work to begin with, to be honest, guys. Uh, people that work there is probably more of a passion thing than money. You know, they like they like video games a lot, and they want to share that joy. So, just be cool with them, guys. Be cool with them, boys. Don't shame them if they want to work. And if they don't want to work, well, you know, respect that decision too. So, but yeah, just a little bit of a thing I want to r rattle off on the top of my head while I'm going to work. So, that down Phoenix out.